Hello there. This right here, if you're familiar with the channel, is a 3D printer. If you're also familiar with the channel, you know we build them quite often here. Now, when it comes to building a 3D printer, depending on your skill level and the kit you're building, you're probably gonna need some tools that the average person probably doesn't have sitting around their home. So let's head over to the bench and take a look at the tools I use, and let's talk about what I recommend. Let's get started. So we're gonna break this up into a few sections. And the first thing we're gonna start with is tools that you're gonna actually use to assemble the printer. So what I'm talking about, nuts and bolts, what you're gonna be using to fastening those together. And we're gonna start off with the humble Allen keys. And for the longest time, and I still use these and I trust them, I like Allen keys. Um, you can get them relatively cheap. A lot of printers come with them nowadays. There are good brands, there are bad brands. Um, personally, I'm a fan of ball end Allen keys, so that way you can come in on an angle, if something's blocking your way, and still tighten and loosen the screw. Although be careful of tightening anything with a ball end Allen key, because these balls can actually break off. And if you break them off inside of the screw, uh, you're gonna have a hard time getting them out. So anytime you actually have to tighten something, especially on smaller screws or button heads, I recommend you use the, uh, the not ball side of the Allen key. Also, you can get some pretty good torque on these um, and you get a really good feel of how much you're tightening a screw when tightening with an Allen key this way. Now, if Allen keys aren't for you, there are of course alternatives. Um, you can also use drivers such as this. They're, the whole set of these are kind of bulky. I end up misplacing them. There are those that swear by the style of driver, um, but personally, I'm not a huge fan, but I'm probably gonna sound like a bit of a hypocrite in a second here. We'll get back to that. And then there are electric drivers. So this right here is an ES-126. I also have a WOW stick. I've stopped really using it though, because the WOW stick, it, it really doesn't have enough power uh, for the screw sizes we're using with 3D printers. For smaller stuff, like little FPV quads, it probably makes a little bit more sense. But when it comes to the size of the screws you see in 3D printers, which usually the smallest being M3s, uh, the ES-126 has just enough torque to tighten an M3, if you give it a little bit extra on the end, a wow stick does not. So personally, if you're gonna get an electric driver such as this, get one with a little bit more power behind it, you know they cost a little bit more. Now, we're gonna talk about the LTT screwdriver. This is gonna sound a little weird um, because this is something relatively new. I've had it for a couple weeks here. Yes, I know there's a whole meme around it. It's the LTT screwdriver. But honestly, I've been using this on my latest build um, along with some other projects I've been doing around the house. And uh, I really like this thing. Um, I set it up with the bits that I think you would need for building 3D printers. The ratcheting mechanism is super light. So when you're dealing with these smaller screws that you're using in a 3D printer or other electronics pro projects, you really don't need a lot of force to actuate that ratchet mechanism. So if you're, uh, you're dealing with the small screws, it works really good compared to some of the bigger, chonkier uh, ratcheting screwdrivers that you would buy at like the crappy tire. With the bits, I went and bought the extra metric bit set. So I have this set up for building 3D printers, essentially. So up top here, I've got metric bits all the way down to uh, what would allow me to fasten M2 socket head screws. And I believe I have all the way up to the H5 bit. And then also I have two Phillips drivers and a flat head. This is mostly for terminals with power supplies and uh, on controller boards. I also have the magnet here. Storing everything in the screwdriver itself and having it so that I have to put back a bit every time I take one out. With Allen keys, I have a tendency to misplace these constantly. If you're a uh, fan of the live streams, you know that. With this, I've managed to not lose anything yet. And yes, it is a little bit annoying because it is a full size screwdriver. So getting it in certain positions with smaller builds doesn't really work out. So you still have to keep your Allen keys on hand for that. Um, getting in on an angle is not the greatest. The magnet's very nice and strong, although some kits come with stainless steel screws, so you can't really use the magnet in that case. But really, yes, it is a meme. It is a $70 screwdriver. But as far as $70 screwdrivers go that are meant for small electronics products, or in my case here, building 3D printers, you know what? I like it. It's your toolkit. Buy the tools you want. Now, you're not just tightening screws. Sometimes you have nuts you gotta play with and a basic socket set, wrench set, um, or in this case here, something like this electronics hex nut driver set that a fan recently sent me uh, can come in handy. Of course, in a pinch, you can also just kind of hold the nut with a set of pliers if that's all you have. 
Now, besides the actual hardware construction of printers, another thing you're going to have to do occasionally is electrical and wiring. Um, when it comes to wiring, most common thing you're gonna be doing is stripping and crimping the wires. And for that, these haven't changed from my original video. I still have my engineer PA09 set of crimpers, and I still have these wire strippers that I bought at Home Depot years ago that still work, although I probably should replace by now. They're starting to get a little dull. Um, you can get automatic strippers. You can get crimpers for specific uses, such as ferrules, such as this one here. If you do do any work with ferrules, I do recommend you get the crimper for them. Of course, I do recommend you use ferrules as well. I'm not gonna recommend a specific product uh, because sourcing depends on where you live in the world and how much you want to spend. But you can get by with a very basic set of strippers like this. And for crimping larger things such as spade terminals, I don't know what these set of strippers are called, uh, but they have crimpers built in the end. These were literally in a toolbox that was here when I bought my house. I don't know how old they are, but for crimping spade terminals, they're plenty good enough. So that should get you by for crimping and stripping wires, but sometimes you have to solder. And I'm still using my old standby reliable TS-100. There are other types of soldering irons out there if you want a standalone soldering iron. Uh, I believe it's the Hakko FX Triple Eight D is the go-to. There's also alternatives to the TS-100. There's the Pine Sole, there's a TS-101 now. But I've had this for a few years now and it's been a standby. I've had no issues with it. I've dropped it and self-repaired it. Um, it's still going strong. I use a 24 volt power supply that I also use for charging my LiPos to power it. It works plenty good. One thing I am gonna recommend though, is if you do soldering often, get more than one tip for your soldering iron. Now with my TS100 here, the tip that it came with, I believe it's called the B BC2 tip. And this has been pretty much good enough for everything I've been doing for the most part. But a while ago, I picked up uh, this tip. I don't know what this tip is specifically called, but it's like a pointed tip, conical, but it's curved. And I found that this tip is actually really good anytime I've done PCB work. So recently I had to desolder a Wi-Fi module off of a duet and move it to another duet. And this tip came in very handy for that. The BC2 tip though, um, I believe is pretty good for most general use that you're doing with 3D printing. If you're looking for something a little bit more precise, there are plenty of other tips out there. Replacement tips aren't too expensive and for, depending on the soldering iron, you can buy kits that come with multiple. Use the right tip for the job. And speaking of the right tool for the job, um, this is a soldering iron I use for installing heat sets. And as you can see, it has the heat set um, tip for it. And you can buy these standalone. Uh, this one came with an LDO kit. It's relatively easy to swap. This soldering iron right here, I can't tell you exactly which one it is. It is literally probably the cheapest one you could buy on Amazon. I bought it years ago, um, but this is the tip and it just slides on in a pinch. And if you don't have the dedicated heat set tip, you can use a conical tip uh, to install your heat sets. Just try and use a tip that's not so long it sticks out past the heat set. These are really nice to have if you do heat sets often. So if you're building Vorons, um, some of the kits come with these, but if not, you may want to grab one. Now with soldering itself, um, for the solder I use is the 6337 solder. Um, it is rosin core, it is leaded, it works really good. I like it. I know you can't get this stuff in the European Union. Unfortunately, you have to get lead-free solder um, in that event. And even if you do plan on doing a lot of soldering, uh, get yourself some good flux. Um, this tube I bought years ago from, I believe, Lewis Rossman's store. Um, it's still good. So this is what I use when I do have to use flux. And if you've no, been a fan of the channel for a while, you, you, you know, unfortunately, I have the shakes. I have essential tremors. My hands, when I'm doing super precise things, I, I start to get a little shaky. And recently I picked up this after going without a third hand tool for a while. And this has kind of recently changed my life when it comes to soldering. I've only had a chance to use it on a few projects so far, but this thing right here is awesome. This is the Omni Fixo. I'll have a link for it in the description. Yes, it is a little pricey, but when I first started, I actually had a set of third hands. I had those really cheap ones from Amazon with the alligator clips. Uh, these ones are amazing. Uh, the bed itself is magnetic. You can actually flip one of the magnets over on these guys, put them in there, and you can use this as a ground tester, uh, depending on what type of setup you're doing. You can move these around, they're ball joints, you can remove them, you can stack them. Um, 
when you lay it down, it's at a 90 degree angle to the bed, depending on if you're trying to mount something up for a specific orientation when soldering. The jaws open and close and they're parallel to each other, so you're not risking pinching or biting into things. They come with little protective uh, rubber on the tips, but you can remove them if you need to. These are awesome. Um, Yes, unfortunately, this is a little bit of a pricier setup for third hand tools. Uh, there are other third hand tools. Get the one you think would work best for you. These ones are awesome and you can store it relatively easily. It doesn't take up a lot of space. So I really like these. I think they're worth the money. More so if you do other electronics projects, especially stuff that involves any PCB work. And lastly, for anything electrical, you're probably gonna want to get yourself a multimeter. I finally got a new one after losing my old one. And this is an Innova 3320. Um, it's on a few lists of recommended uh, multimeters. You do not need a fancy multimeter when it comes to building 3D printers. Really, all you need is something that allows you to check continuity. It having a buzzer is really nice. You need to be able to check voltages and sometimes resistance. That's pretty much it. Most cheap multimeters come with all that. Um, usually you're not measuring mains voltages, so you don't need a multimeter that can support that, but it is nice to have. So this is what I currently use. It works plenty good. As always, buy what you think you need. A good scale not only is usually rigid, it allows you to check flatness of things, measure things in a straight line, uh, make sure it's easily legible, goes down to millimeters, or even a small one such as this. It's good to keep on hand. A little bit more precise is your digital caliper vernier. I like digital, uh, mainly for the fact that you can switch between inches and metrics. I live in one of those parts of the world that still uses both. Um, yes, we know metric is superior. Go ahead, complain in the comments, get some internet points out of it. Everyone knows people love to do that. Um, but honestly, digital, for what we're doing is good enough. Try to avoid getting the plastic ones, they tend to wear out. Really good ones like Minitoyos, Sterrets, they last longer. These cheap ones tend to drain batteries over time. But for the work you're doing in 3D printing, really any except for the absolute bargain bin ones are good enough. You don't need to go all fancy and get a set of micrometers or anything like that. Sure, they're nice to have if you have one, but you definitely don't need to go out of your way to purchase one of these. Now let's move on to consumables. Now these are all tools, you're probably gonna hang on to them for years, but some things you, you use them once and they're pretty much done. So consumables, heat shrink, I love heat shrink. Anytime you solder wires together or you have exposed electrical uh, that a heat shrink will fit over, put some heat shrink over it. While you can shrink it with a lighter, uh, be civilized, use a heat gun. Heat guns also come in handy for other uses as well. Another thing you may want to keep in stock, captain tape, double-sided tape. Uh, but captain tape is very good for insulating electrical. Double-sided tape, I really like 3M VHB tape. If you need to attach something to something and you don't want it coming off, use some VHB tape. If you do need to take it off, um, take it off in a twisting motion or try and pry it up. If you try to pull it straight up, yeah, good luck, that ain't gonna happen. Cleaning solutions, uh, ISO, I just use this generic refillable bottle. Uh, it's got a spout top. I have this filled with isopropyl alcohol, good for cleaning printer beds and other things. Anytime you solder anything um, with flux or rosin, you're gonna wanna clean it. Something that you may want to grab a few of are these, I think these are called acid etch brushes. They're disposable brushes. Uh, you can buy packs of them for like 20, 25. They're pretty cheap. And they're good for if you got to apply grease to anything, clean off any oils or residue. These are disposable brushes. They're meant to be used a couple times and disposed of. So depending on what you're working on, you may want to grab some of these. Uh, zip tie holders. These are little uh, brackets, you can print these by the way and make them with some double-sided tape, but these ones you can buy, they're for mounting zip ties. So if you're doing any cable management, wire management, the back is double-sided adhesive, peel, stick, run your zip tie through, zip tie whatever you're doing to whatever, grab a pack of these. Keep different types of wires, different gauges. Um, I'm doing quadcopter stuff now. So I use silicone wire for that. For printers, I like to use PTFE wire. Uh, just having a small stock of wire on hand, keep off cuts. Uh, you never know when you may need them in the future. Extra screws, extra terminals, extra crimps, extra ferrules. Um, you can buy these packs on Amazon. They come multi-size. When you're building a printer from a kit, odds are you're going to have all the screws you need. But sometimes it's a good idea to buy a pack or two of these of M3, M5, or any other common size. Just in case you plan on doing any mods in the future, it's nice to just have a supply of screws on hand. Um, 
connectors, Microfit 3, JSTs, Molex KK, ferrules, uh, spade terminals. Those are kind of things I'd recommend buy a kit as you need it and just keep a hold of it because you'll probably end up using it for something someday. And speaking of modding, uh, sometimes you need to massage things in, something like a Dremel, a file, uh, scissors, cutting tools. Sometimes you just kind of have to make stuff work. Um, if you have a Dremel, it's good to have. If you have a set of files, it's good to have. If you don't, might be something you may want to look into getting, depending again on what you're working on. Um, a lot of the time when it comes to tools, I recommend buy what you need right now. And then as things go on, if you find you need something, then buy it. And before we move on to our last thing here, uh, two things. Firstly, this mat. This has been under this camera the whole time. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, this, this mat used to be a lot cleaner at one point, but a good work surface is something you may want to grab. I recently redid my workbench here. It's got a nice uh, faux granite countertop here. That's just, you know, a veneer on some wood, but I could damage this and 3D printer frames are usually made out of metal. So if I'm rolling a printer around doing some wiring underneath, the last thing I want to do is gouge my countertop. So get a nice work surface. These cutting mats are great. You can get them in different sizes. I need to actually get a bigger one now. Um, these protect your work surface from chemicals, from oils, from greases, cleaning solutions. Uh, you can cut into them if you're cutting something with an X-Acto knife or a blade. Um, just work on something that it's okay if you get it dirty or oily or damaged. You, you don't want to be, you know, messing up your Malm's countertops. You may not appreciate it too much. And before we get to our last thing here, I just want to take a moment to thank all those that support the channel, the content I create, and the things I do. This is my full-time job, and I would not be able to do the things I do and create the content I create without your continued support. So if you would like to help support the channel, there's links in the description, or consider becoming a Patreon supporter or a YouTube member. Thank you. And what is the last thing I recommend you keep on hand if you work with 3D printers? It's your 3D printer. Uh, they are amazing tools if you didn't know that. And you can find things to print to make your life easier. If you run into a problem, you might be able to print something to solve that. So for example, uh, the other day, I was trying to cable sleeve some stuff with this split sleeving here. And this stuff is a pain to put around a bundle of wires. Well, guess what? 3D printed a jig in half an hour, and this allows you to easily install your wires. Uh, my TS100, hey, guess what? It did not come with a holder. Well, 3D printing to the rescue, 3D printed a holder. So don't forget that you have an amazing tool, um, unless you know, you're building your first 3D printer, then you gotta build your printer first, then you'll have that amazing tool. So don't forget to use your 3D printer uh, and all the amazing designs and files out there. Many of them are free to use to help make your life easier. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. This isn't the first guide I've done, and you know what? I'm going to recommend another one. I'm not sure which one yet, but um, it's, it's here. Click this one, go watch it. Take care, enjoy your day, cheers.